Greetings. This is a video about adding some extra connections to an Omnibus F4 Pro flight controller board. Um, this video is specifically about the F4 Pro version 3 board with iNav, but it may also be applicable to other Omnibus F4 and perhaps other flight controller boards and to other flight controller software such as Betaflight and CleanFlight. So, the connections that I want to add to this board, I've already soldered on um, headers for the um, ESCs to this board. The connections that I want to add are for a soft serial, which will give you a fourth serial port. And one of the problems with the F4 microcontroller is it doesn't have an invertible serial port. So this Omnibus F4 Pro version 3 does have an inverter on what is usually connected to um, your receiver but it is only a one-way inverter, it will not invert the output so you cannot directly connect um, smart bot telemetry to any of the three serial hardware serial ports on this board. The only way to do it is to either modify your receiver or some some newer FreeSky receivers have an in, a, a non inverted smart port connection, but most of the ones that are on the market only have an inverted smart port connection, so you'll need an inverted serial receive port to be able to connect up sorry, an inverted serial transmit port to be able to connect it up to this and the only way to do that is to use soft serial now which is all fine and dandy however the soft serial ports on this board at least with not I nav I know with beta flight you can use the resource command line option to m connect soft serial to perhaps other pins but on iNav you don't have that option the only option you have unless you want to recompile the firmware is to use I don't know if I can get it to focus at this range the two tiny ports just above where it says Moto which are labelled C8 H5 and CH6, channel 5 and channel 6. Um, the other thing I want to connect up is RSSI, which needs to be connected to the small pin, I don't know if you can see just there, which says RSS. Now, the problem with connecting these up is that they are tiny pads to connect to. And a lot of people with mini quads, racing quads, will probably say you should just solder straight onto them. But I wouldn't recommend trying to solder um, a stranded lead onto these tiny pads because it's going to be very difficult to solder in the first place. And the second problem with doing that is if there's any strain on those leads, if they accidentally get tugged, the chances are that they will pull the pad completely off the board and damage the board, and then you won't be able to use them at all. So, I intend to use this on a 450 quadcopter, so space and weight aren't a problem, that's why I'm using pin headers. Um, I'm going to use this 30AWG wire wrap wire, it's single stranded, it's quite thin wire, um, and it, that's going to make it easier, I won't say easy, but easier to solder onto these tiny pads, and hopefully because it's such a thin wire, it's more likely to break before it pulls the wire off the pads. But I've got another trick up my sleeve, 
which is what I intend to do uh, is to put I'm going to use the video in and video out pins here and instead of just using a six pin pin header I'm going to use a nine pin right angle pin header and I'm going to solder that into there so that will give me my video in and video out but it will also leave these three pins disconnected and I'm going to then wire those up to the RSSI and to the soft serial in soft serial out on channel 5 and channel 6 now that's all well and good but you're then relying on the strength of these little bits of plastic and I found that they're not very reliable so in order to reinforce it a bit what I'm going to do is I've cut a little bit of hobby circuit board <laughs> um, let me just show you you can buy these boards quite cheaply and they've just each um, get a focus it's got lots of pinholes and each pinhole has got a little copper ring around it that you can solder onto so I've cut out a 3x3 three three, and dropped it cut out a 3x3 three three section of this so on one side I've got the solder pads they're not connected together, they're just individual solder pads. And what I'm going to do is solder that onto my pin header before I solder the pin header onto the board. And the idea is that it will reinforce the pins that are not soldered to the board and it will also give me somewhere that will be easier to solder my jumper wire onto the pins. Incidentally, this is called wire wrapping wire because originally it was used with a special tool to wrap round pins like this and it would make connection without soldering it. It has to be wrapped really tightly and the pins having sharp corners would cut through the insulation and make a connection without you having to solder it. Which is interesting. <laughs> but I don't intend to do that. I'm going to solder them on. So, I'll get on with soldering that up, and we'll get back to you later. So, this is the pin header soldered up, and you can probably see, if I can focus, that I've put the board on at a slight angle, and that's just to allow a little bit more clearance for the pins to go into the flight controller board. You do have to be quite careful when you solder these on because you don't want to get too much solder on the pins otherwise you're going to find it difficult to slot it into the holes on the flight controller board. I should mention you, you do need to make sure that the pins on the board are clean which you can do with a bit of um, sandpaper. I use one of these fiberglass pens and that just cleans up the pins will has the solder to take on it because these were quite tarnished and soldered very well if I hadn't have done that first. Um, you don't need to do that with the pins on the flight controller board because they're gold plated and won't tarnish very easily. <laughs> but the pins on these cheap circuit boards are not uh, just copper so they'll need cleaning before you solder them. Um, so, let's bend the pins back straight. The next job will be to solder this onto the flight controller board itself, and as you can see, perhaps there's just enough pin sticking through 
for me to do that. If I hadn't put that at an angle, I might have found it difficult to solder those pins onto the flight controller board. And it leaves me these three connections here, which I can connect up to my soft serial transmit, my soft serial receive, and my RSSI. Or you could connect them to whichever pads you needed on a different flight controller. So, I shall get on with soldering that. I've now soldered on the pin header that I made. Get it to focus onto there. And you can see the little board that I added on to give it more strength. Um, and I've also soldered the jumper wires, wire wrap wires. This one goes from RSSI here onto the first pin. The next pin I've soldered goes round to the top of the board and ends up at channel 6. That's the furthest little pad from what the header we've soldered on. Channel 6 is the soft serial transmit and the third wire, which is onto the little channel 5 pad, I've soldered round onto the final wire. Onto the final pin. Well, I've done it as neatly as I can. I'll probably um, stick some little blobs of glue on it just to hold the wires in place. Um, so, my tips for soldering these wires on is make sure that you put a little bit of solder on the contacts and on the wire. Um, that's called tinning tinning the contacts and tinning the wire and if you do that make sure that they're properly soldered but don't leave the iron on too long so you've still got a little bit of flux on the contacts you can just touch the soldering iron quickly to the end of the bit hold the wire on the contact and just touch the soldering iron quickly and it will solder it on quite neatly but make sure that you trim down the wire so you've only got about a millimetre of uninsulated wire because that's all you need because these are such small contacts you only need about one millimetre and if you leave any extra uninsulated wire it's likely to short on other things and this is quite close to this this big copper pad here is the pad that provides power to the motor so that is going to be at your battery voltage so it's likely to be at least 12 volts on there and it will fry at least the input to the F4 microcontroller if you let that short so you need to be very careful so keep the keep the uninsulated piece of the wire as short as possible and basically that's it now you've got the pin header wired up and you can just put your DuPont connectors to connect those up to whatever you want to connect them up to, probably a receiver. This will be my test setup. I've got the board, the Omnibus F4 Pro that I added the header to, and this is a FreeSky XSR receiver um, and it doesn't have the uninverted mod, so I've got an, in, an inverted. Um, SBUS signal, which I'm using to control this, and I've got an inverted smart port signal coming back from the flight controller onto the pin that we just soldered on and connected to the CH6 pad. Now, I previously, uh, I'm, because I'm using SBUS, send the signals from the receiver to the flight controller board I don't know if it's possible for you to see but I've already jumpered the little jumper that says S bus probably can't see it but there's connected to this pin here 
this little jumper which you've got to either short on one side um, this applies only to the version 3 board incidentally one side it says SBUS and the other side is for CPM but because I'm using SBUS I've got it and that then goes through this little transistor here which acts as an inverter so the inverted SBUS signal can be understood by the flight controller which doesn't have its own internal inverters um, so that should be it. It's a little bit messy because it's just a test setup, but it's just to prove that it's going to work. So I have connected the Omnibus F4 version 3, well, that I added the pin headers to, to um, an XSR, FreeSky XSR receiver, which is already bound to my transmitter, and I've also connected it up to a GPS receiver. Um, and I plugged the flight controller board into the USB port of my computer. So I'm just going to quickly go through. Um, I've already flashed the flight controller board with iNav version 2.0. And I'm going to very quickly go through setting it up under the INAP configurator. So the first thing to do is click connect and connect to the board. Um, and if we look in the ports tab here, we'll see that we've got the three hardware UARTs that the F4 is fitted with. For some reason they're numbered 1, 3 and 6. Those are the three ports that you get on the F4 flight controller. So if we go to the configuration tab, what we can do is it's already worked out that we've got um, accelerometer, magnet, and barometer, which is great. Um, the receiver mode it's saying PPM and I've actually got a serial based receiver, it's, it's SBUS, FreeSky SBUS, a serial based protocol, so I have to tell it that otherwise, it, but it will probably forget that. We've got a GPS connected, it's U blocks, ground, sys type, we can set to auto detect. Um, quickly, we need to enable CPU based serial ports, that's so that we can have soft serial on those CH5 and CH6 pins which are wired up to and we need telemetry output also enabled. Um, we'll save and reboot that. Now we have to reconnect it manually. And next time if we go into ports, we found that soft serial has appeared here. And we're going to be using soft serial for our smart port telemetry. So we set that to smart port. We're going to be using UART1 for SBUS from the receiver to the controller so we need to set serial receive to disable MSP and then set it to serial receive instead and UART 6 is where we have connected our GPS so we need to set that to GPS and I'll turn the boundary up to 57600 so I know that'll it'll handle that and now if I click save and reboot again and we have to click connect go to the ports now and just make sure it's remembered all that serial gps smart port but if we go back to configuration it's probably i probably need to set the receiver takes on to no receiver. I have to set that back to SBUS again and click save and reboot. And 
that should be it done. Of course, there's a lot more configuration that you'll need to do to get your whatever model flying, but that's basically the connections set up. So if we go to the receiver tab, we can see that it's responding when I move the sticks on my transmitter. Um, it's receiving that input from the transmitter. And if I go to the GPS tab, you can see although it hasn't had time to have a proper fix, it is receiving messages from the GPS unit and there are no errors. You can also see that the magnetometer is connected, although it will all need to be calibrated and configured for the model that you're using. So if I look on my transmitter, I can see um, by bringing up the telemetry that it's receiving telemetry via the soft serial port that we wired up. If it doesn't work, you might like to try changing the values of telemetry inverted. Oh, sorry, set telemetry. So there's a value here called telemetry inverted. It's currently set off, but if telemetry is not working on soft serial for you, it's worth trying turning telemetry inverted on. You may or may not need to do that and then save it and hopefully will work. Um, that's about it. I hope it's been useful to somebody. Thank you for watching.